Coming up in the Bahamas tonight, meet the candidates of the FNM and hear what percentage of incumbents are out of the election contest. Also ahead, the disturbing criminal act a mother allegedly endured at the hands of her own son. A family's grief multiplied at the sight of their loved one's decomposed remains. We'll tell you what it will mean for his last rites. And timber stops traffic. Find out how the driver of this flatbed truck fared after an accident in downtown. All those stories and more straight ahead in the Bahamas tonight. Covering the islands of the Bahamas, ZNS Network presents the Bahamas tonight. This portion of the news is brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Good evening and welcome to the Bahamas Tonight, the National Report. I'm Kishla Adderley. Thanks for joining us. Topping the news tonight, the election campaign shifted into high gear as the governing free national movement unveiled its slate of candidates to contest the 2012 general elections last evening. During a brief presentation, Prime Minister Ingram said the FNM is going through a period of renewal and change, something that's essential for all organizations if they are to remain relevant. He declared that the FNM, with its reform fresh slate of professionals intends to win the next general election and be returned as the government of the Bahamas. Clint Watson has more. The Free National Movement has a new look. They include a slate of newcomers to politics like John Boswick in Bainstown and Grantstown, Karen Shepard in Anglestown, former sports sensation Chanel Ferguson in Fox Hill, Winsome Miller for Golden Gates, Heather Hunt in Marathon, Richard Lightburn in Montague, B.J. Moss for Nassau Village, Monty Gomez for South Beach, Karen Butler in Tall Pines, Hubert Chipman for St. Anne's. Over in Grand Bahama, the facelift for the party continues. Norris Bain is in Marco City. Peter Turnquest, East Grand Bahama. And journalist and former ZNS anchor, Pakisha Edgecombe, for West Grand Bahama and Bimini. The other family islands will see Theo Neely in North Eleuthera, while Howard Johnson in Central and South. Described as a team of young, enthused, talented, capable, leading professionals from a wide cross-section of careers, party leader Prime Minister Hubert Ingham says they are ready. The wealth of talent among those seeking nomination has made our selection process difficult, very difficult indeed. We in the party executive believe that we have chosen the best slate of candidates to contest the 2012 general elections, to win re-election to office, and to equip us to continue to provide honest, accountable, and transparent government for the people of the Bahamas. Mr. Ingram says there has been widespread consultation in only two constituencies where the party did not select the preferred candidate of a constituency association. However, the association still supported and endorsed the party's choice. Six present MPs will seek re-election in new constituencies. Desmond Battister moves home to North Andrus and the Berry Islands. Fenton Nemo runs in his native Exuma. Loretta Butler turns heads to her childhood home of Long Island. Sidney Colley moves to Michael where he has strong ancestral roots. Shivago Lang, Fort Charlotte and Kenyatta Gibson are run in southern shores. Every one of the persons who move from one constituency to another will pick up a seat that's held by the PLP and put in the FNM column. Each and every one. Other known names include Cassius Stewart in Bamboo Town, Darren Cash for Carmichael, Dr. Dwayne Sands Elizabeth, Brenza Roll Garden Hills, Dr. Hubert Minas Killarney, Tommy Turnquest Mount Moriah, Byron Woodside Pinewood, Carl Bethel, C. Breeze, Dion Folks, Yamacraw. In Grand Bahama, Nico Grant becomes a veteran of that team. He'll run for Central Grand Bahama and Quasi Thompson for Pine Ridge. On the other family islands, Abaco remains unchanged with the Prime Minister for the North and Edison Key in the South. While Ron Bosfield will run in Mangrove Key in South Andros, Michael Pintard will contest Cat Island, Rum Key in San Salvador. The first meeting I'm going to hold outside in the province will be in San Salvador on Thursday, the 2nd of February, when we will go and take Mr. Michael Pintard on the first leg of our effort to take out the deputy leader of the PLP. 25% of sitting FNM MPs will not seek re-election. Mr. Ingram saluted these men and women for their contributions. They include Earl DeVoe, Larry Cartwright, Kenneth Russell, Verne Grant, Kendall Wright, and Alvin Smith. I want to say today how special it is that six sitting members of Parliament, 25 are elected members, are making way for new talent to offer for national service. Also, 25% of my cabinet is similarly stepping aside and making way. These are true political trailblazers, 
and must recognize them for what they are. Now the FNM plans to have a convention sometime during the first six months of the year. Mr. Ingham says it could be before or after elections. And having gotten business out of the way, the Prime Minister then rallied the troops throughout the length and breadth of the Bahamas to battle. Color red is coming. <laughs> Clint Watson, ZNS News. One family is calling for answers from officials at the Princess Margaret Hospital after their loved one passed and, according to them, the body began to decompose while at the morgue. Arjunea Noel has their story in this Saturnus exclusive. I can't yeah, explain that. that. I cannot explain that. I didn't expect to see my child like that. The grief over the loss of Bessie Smith's son intensified after her son's body was allegedly not properly taken care of when he died at the Princess Margaret Hospital this past Sunday. According to Smith, when she identified her son, Rico Brown, his body was in good condition. In fact, she said it appeared as if he was sleeping, but what she viewed a few days later turned out to be her worst nightmare. When the undertaker called me yesterday, he said, Someone told him the body was swollen. He called me, asked me to meet him at the Mark High Band, but they wouldn't allow me to see it. <laughs> when I saw it today, <laughs> my child's body, he looked like a beast. <laughs> if you didn't know him, and even if you knew him before, you wouldn't know him now. Smith and funeral director Camille Cox of Rock of Ages Funeral Home tried to get an explanation from morgue officials, but were reportedly turned away. Flies was all around the house. I said, Lord, I hope they say in the house they bring my son in. Meantime, Cox said he agreed to have the body brought to his funeral home, where they all witnessed the unimaginable. The body had started breaking down, so... It could be that the body was left out. In my opinion, we recommend immediate burial or cremation. Now, hospital officials did inform our ZNS news team that they have met with the family on the matter. They have since launched an investigation to find out exactly what happened. In the meantime, the Smith family are left with their only option of cremating their loved one. Chinea Noel Ferguson, ZNS News. A shocking allegation now before the courts, a 32-year-old man accused of having sex with his mother was remanded to prison today after being charged with incest. Prosecutors allege that on Tuesday, January 10th, the Lucky Heart Corner resident had sex with his 62-year-old mother between 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. knowing she was a blood relative. He was not required to enter a plea and bail was denied. A voluntary bill of indictment will be filed in the case. Following the arraignment today at the South Street Magistrate court complex. The 32-year-old claimed he suffered from seizures and was brutalized by police. He then asked to see his hospital report and the court confirmed that his medical report showed that he was attended to by doctors at PMH and complained of pains to his hands and face. And doctors had taken his blood for DNA testing. Deputy Chief Magistrate Carly de Bethel then ordered that he be examined by the prison doctor. But the 32-year-old also complained he hadn't been properly processed as his fingerprints hadn't been taken to prove the rape charge, rather the incest charge, prompting the magistrate to suggest that he seemed to know a lot about the law. The Lucky Heart resident returns to court on March 2nd. The Progressive Liberal Party is continuing with its crime plan message. If it wins the next, ge next general election, it's vowing to get even tougher on gun offenders, especially those using high-powered weapons. PLP Senator and candidate candidate for Seabreeze, Hope Strawn, and a Nassau Village hopeful for the PLP, Dion Smith, held a news conference today at the Nassau Street Court. Strawn reiterated her party stance on crime as it calls for longer jail times for individuals convicted of using high-powered weapons. Penalties for our criminals would certainly mean that we would increase the time uh, that they would have to spend in prison if they are caught in possession of firearms. And, and, and especially high-powered weapons, like AK-47s. Remember now, AK-47s are, are fast-firing weapons that um, is very unlikely that a person could survive from a high-powered being being um, inflicted 
from a high powered weapon, high powered weapon. And also, it is because of the fact that it's a fast firing weapon, it means that more people within the ambit of where that weapon is being fired is in danger. Now, a package of crime bills was unanimously passed in Parliament in October. Well, still to come in the Bahamas tonight, a close call for the driver of this truck. The story is straight ahead.